joystick drift. Even though the Nintendo Switch gets a bad rep for having joystick drift the most, commonly termed Joy-Con drift, it can happen to any sort of analog sticks that have potentiometers in them that wear out over time. So this means that your Xbox controller, your other Xbox controller, your PlayStation controller, whatever it may be, if they have potentiometers in the sticks rather than the new Hall Effect type sensors, they are susceptible to damage over time and every single controller will eventually get drift. Now, while most people may just scrap the controller once it gets drift, throw it in the trash can, get rid of it, you can actually fix drift for completely free. It takes a bit of time and a bit of effort, but for zero dollars, assuming that you have a screwdriver and the free time, you can fix drift on your controller. First, let's start with the internals of the controller and how to fix the drift. I'll be taking this controller apart and showing you the drift before and after to show that this method actually works. But first, I want to start with an already torn down Xbox controller to show you what we're after inside the controller. So this is an Xbox One controller. It The motherboard is completely shot on it, but it's a good test subject for what I want to show. These green sensors on the bottom and right hand side of the analog sticks are known as potentiometers. So the bottom potentiometer records the x-axis left and right how far you have the stick left how far you have the stick right and then the one to the right records the vertical or the y-axis so how far up it is how far down it is and it combines these two gates of movement to give you analog movement at different amounts and in different directions over time these sensors may build up to metal shavings from the wear of the stick and this will cause them to completely stop working or cause minor drift issues but in most cases this can be fixed now let's just assume that i'm having drift on just the left analog stick and the vertical axes so to fix that i would start by putting a flathead screwdriver right here in the potentiometer for the vertical axes and then just popping it out you can try to blow it out or get a little microfiber cloth whatever you want but you don't even have to do that once you have it open you just open it and then set it back in place with a tiny gap don't close it all the way like this one leave a tiny gap because a little bit of the potentiometer is worn away because of stick drift so if you leave a little gap it leaves a little bit of room for error in the stick. All right, so if you look at the vertical potentiometer, you can see that I have it spaced out a little bit. You probably want a little more than that, but you can see that it's not as flush as this one right here, if you look at it. It's just sticking out just a little bit. So look, you can push that up a little more, get a little more of a gap on there, but just leave a tiny gap, a little more than factory. Now I'm going to move to a fully working xbox controller and show you the drift before and after it's another one the apex firing range on apex mobile i just want to show you uh so i'm just going to come over here and it's going left that it has an issue so if i go left and let go like see i'm back up a little bit like it kind of holds it and then if i do like that oh went left a little bit up oh, doesn't really have an issue it's just mostly if you go to the left it just keeps going and then like if you flick it it kind of goes away so that's the controller that we're going to be messing with and i'm going to show you after this is before i touch anything with the controller i'm going to show you after i try that method so let's get to it so the controller is still on so if you didn't know you could just turn off xbox controller by holding this a lot of people they just turn off the system or take the batteries out but you can just hold it and it turns off but to get inside of the Xbox controller, you have to take out the batteries first. And then you will be voiding your warranty by doing this. This controller is probably four or five years old, so I don't really care. But be mindful when doing this if you do care about your warranty. But moving on, the first thing that you'll need, or really the only thing aside from flathead screwdriver, you will need a Torx T8 bit to get inside of the controller. This is the special security bit that Microsoft has used for most Xboxes past 10 years, maybe even more. Not sure if they use it for the original Xbox, but definitely use it for the 360, the one that Series X. Anyway, this is a Torx T8 security bit is what you'll need to get into this. 
So there's one screw here and then two screws here and then two screws here. So first order of business is getting these side grips off, which you do by just pulling them with all your force. You can use a credit card or something, but it's easier just to manhandle them off. Look, see, just like that. So I may have broken the clip, as you can see there, but you know, just throw it off to the side, it's fine. Put this here, just like that. So now you have the main four screws exposed, and after that, we'll get to this one in the middle. So first, just start by taking these four out. All right, so this is your warranty seal. You can peel it back if you want, or you can just puncture a hole through. I'm gonna try to peel it back real quick. So yeah, the warranty sticker, or the little warranty seal easily peels back. And you can just put it back later if you don't want to puncture a hole through it, so that's what I'm gonna do. Let's take out this last screw. You can just turn it over, let all the screws fall out onto the table. And then just pop the face plate off. Get this little screw out of here. Two, three, four, five. Alright, so here's our face plate, our two grips, our five screws. Just want to try to stay organized. So the problem that we were having was the left stick on the horizontal axis, more specifically to the left. But all we need to know is that it was on the horizontal axis, which means that we come here and then you take the left stick cap off and you can put that off to the side. Now, this potentiometer on the bottom is the one that we're after. So what you'll need is a little flathead screwdriver. So I'm just going to switch bits here. So a little flathead, and then you can pop this off. As you can see now, the potentiometer's popped out. So you just push it in a little bit, but don't let it pop all the way in. Just let it hang out just a little bit. So as you can see, I've popped the potentiometer back into place with a little gap right here. Here's the factory one, nice and tight. And if you want to compare it to the horizontal axis on this one, because they're both horizontal, you can see this is a nice and tight gap, and this one's a little wider. This is what you want, because over time it'll wear out this little box right here. This little potentiometer will get worn out, and little debris will get stuck in there. So whenever you pop it open, it just uh, it allows it to move a little more freely, get a little bit of that debris out of there, and it fixes your stick drift. So now let's get the controller back together and test it and see how it does. I'd recommend putting on your original thumbsticks, but I have some elite thumbsticks to put on just for fun. This isn't required to fix stick drift, but I figured it would be fun. And let's put these metal thumbsticks on here. Put on the faceplate. And honestly, you could test the controller right now, and it would be working just fine, but... I want to put all the screws back in just to make sure that nothing falls apart. So let's do that. Now, because these side grips are a bit of a pain to get off, I'd recommend leaving them off while you test the controller because in case you need to get back into the controller, the screws are already exposed and open and you don't have to mess with any of that. So I'm going to leave this peeled back and put some batteries in just to test it so that I can put it back once I'm done. All right, so the controller turns on. I'm gonna put it off to the side here. Leave the grips up here so I can put those on in a minute. So I've reopened Apex Legends Mobile back into the firing range. So this is the same game, same scene as it was before whenever this controller was drifting. But now watch. Earlier, whenever I'd hit left, the controller would think that I was holding left still until I'd flick it back right. But now watch. Then go right up down diagonal all the way around and it works just fine as you can see popping a little gap between the potentiometer and the stick box just gives the sensor a little more wiggle room because it can wear out over time and that little extra wiggle room removes stick drift so let's get this controller back together So as you can see, this is how you can fix stick drift at home for absolutely free. All you need is just a little screwdriver and a little bit of free time. And you can just completely fix your stick drift and save your controllers from going into the garbage. So if you like the video, please subscribe. It'll really help out a lot in trying to grow the channel. And also don't forget to hit the like button so that this video can reach more people. And if you want more content like this, Drop a comment, let me know. That's all from me.